welcome back. This is the last week. You guys excited? Ready for this to be over with? Yes? <laughs> I see it in your eyes. All right, so the last thing that I kind of want to leave you guys with are a few quotes that I love. I always start my classes with the first quote, and I think I started that with you guys when you first, if you were here with me. I told you about the five Ps, proper preparation for events, poor performance. This is the sixth week, so I hope that you all have been preparing yourselves. I see a lot of your faces that are familiar, so you have been preparing yourselves. Once you've prepared yourself, I love the second quote, luck favors a prepared mind. So what does that mean? It means that you really don't need luck because you prepared yourself, right? And so regardless of what happens on Saturday, the big day, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that matters or counts, and that was from Winston Churchill. So no matter what happens on Saturday, I wish you all well. I want you guys to, you know, hopefully I'll see you. Um, I don't want to need you, right? I don't want you to have to show up at my house. But um, I pray that you all do well on the test on Saturday. So without further ado, we're gonna get into some more study. Um, we're gonna start with the situational judgment. Um, so if you were not with us, we have kind of gone through most of the material. So we're going to start, I usually go through the, um, so let's just do this. Let's start from the beginning and I'll show you where we're going to start our practice work. So when you open up your book to situational judgment, you will see the page numbers one, two, three, four, right, and then it jumps to 12. And that's the subject area. It gives a little explanation as to what situational judgment is. I'm not going to go over that, so I advise you to read that on your own so that you're well aware of what situational judgment is and what it evaluates. They have some um, practice scenarios. Um, we're not gonna review that. Again, I want you to review that on your own. Then it talks about test-taking tips for subject area. Again, we reviewed those over the last two weeks. Please review that on your own. Keep flipping, you will see situational judgment where we start our scenarios, okay? We're actually on number 24. So keep going until you get to number 24 and that's where we're gonna start. All right, so the way that we do this is that I'm going to read it and I'm gonna read the scenarios uh, I'm sorry, your, your options. And then I'm gonna give you two minutes to evaluate it and select your answer. And then I'm gonna ask you what you selected and then we'll have a healthy debate if there's a need to debate it, okay? So number 24 states, you are incredibly efficient having worked hard to finish your squadron collateral duties early in the day. You are not scheduled to fly nor have any simulators for the rest of the day. Select the least effective action in response to the situation. Is it A, take some downtime while you, can, while you can and leave work early? B, pretend to be busy by toying with email or surfing the web until the normal duty day ends? C, tell your flight commander or assistant flight commander that you are ahead of things and would like to head out early. D, get to know others around the squadron by socializing. And E, find out what others are doing and what you can do to help. So two minutes to evaluate and then select your answer and we'll discuss it. where the sign-in sheet is, the sign-in sheet, okay. Did everybody get the sign-in? Did you guys get it? Okay. Can you just grab the sign-in, young man? Yeah.
Do you have all the uh, materials, the reading materials, all yeah, that? You do? All yeah. So talk to me. Why did you choose A? Say that again. Okay, so talk to me about your strategy for choosing that. chose A. So she used process of elimination. Did you guys do that? So what I will say, I, I'll admit that least effective is not my favorite one. I, I like most effective. It's kind of direct, right? It's the easier one of the two to do. So you have to go in knowing having a strategy. So what was your strategy for picking A? What did you use? Uh, mostly process of elimination. Process of elimination? A stood out the most because out of all the bad choices, mm -hmm. it was the only one where you weren't where you were supposed to be. Okay. So it stood out. Okay, it stood out a lot more. So you narrowed it down to A and what else? Okay. You, you eliminated everything else. A and, <laughs> A and B, okay. All right, awesome, okay. Okay, so least effective. Uh, if you, um, we have a lot more to do for the least effective, so we're going to get a lot of practice with the least effective. What I want to do for a moment is redirect your attention to the very front of the book, just so that you'll have something floating in the back of your mind um, about how to evaluate the least effective, right? So it says on page 13, so you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 12, and 13, right? It says, please rate each possible scenario response using the scale. So I want you to really let this absorb in your mind. Because again, for me, least effective was challenging. And so you need to be aware of each of the four uh, responses here. So highly ineffective, highly ineffective, that's likely to result in far more negative than positive outcomes, okay? Highly ineffective. Your somewhat ineffective is likely to result in somewhat more negative, somewhat more negative than positive outcomes. Your somewhat effective is likely to result in somewhat more positive than negative. 
So they're really close, somewhat more positive than negative. And then your highly effective is likely to result in far more positive than negative outcomes. So you have to have those in your mind when you're selecting or using your process of elimination, right? Because in some bad choices, you have to really be able to discern which one is like far worse than the other bad choices, right? So A is the correct answer for 24, okay? Let's move on to number 25. All right, 25 states. Your operations office is stressed due to a shortage of people able to fill the flight schedule. You show up ready to breathe and fly, but are starting to feel significant sinus congestion. If you do fly, you might have a sinus block. And if you don't fly, your squadron will be very upset with you. You don't look sick, and going to the flight doctor would take all day. Select the least effective action, A through E, in response to this situation. A, fly, but make sure you have a bottle of nasal congestion spray with you just in case so you won't have to declare an in-flight emergency or rupture your sinuses. B, take yourself off flight status and take the heat for leaving a hole in the flight schedule. C, complain to the operations officer that you are feeling pressured to fly. D, find someone who can take your flight, even from outside the squadron, and provide that solution to the operations officer. E, feign being more ill than you feel and take yourself off flight status. Two minutes to evaluate and select your answer. Five states. Your operations office is stressed due to a shortage of people able to fill the flight schedule. You show up ready to brief and fly but are starting to feel significant sinus congestion. If you do fly, you might have a sinus block. And if you don't fly, your squadron will be very upset with you. You don't look sick and going to the flight doctor would take all day. Select the least effective action in response to the situation. Is it A, Fly, but make sure you have a bottle of nasal congestion spray with you just in case, so you won't have to declare an in-flight emergency or rupture your sinuses. B, take yourself off flight status and take the heat for leaving a hole in the flight schedule. C, complain to the officers, I'm sorry, operations officer that you are feeling pressured to fly. 
D, find someone who can take your flight, even from outside the squadron, and provide the solution to the operations officer. E, feign being more ill than you feel and take yourself off flight status. What did you choose? Anybody? Just throw out an answer. A, A is an apple. I heard C. Did someone choose C? C? Yes? Okay. And what else? Is that it? So you guys agree that A and C are probable choices or answers for that? Okay. So I'm going to come out there. You got to support your answer, all right? Person. You? Okay. Talk to me. Why did you choose A? It's the only one where you do fly. Okay. And I think in the circumstance you're absolutely not supposed to fly. Okay. Everything else is making an attempt to not fly. Mm-hmm. So would you say that there's anything in there that would be effective? Could you cross off anything that was effective? Yeah. Did you think that any of the options were effective? Maybe D. Finding someone to take your place would be somewhat effective. Okay. Uh, I mean, they're all somewhat effective except for, I, I think, A. I, okay. I don't think they want you to fly in this situation. Okay. So, so I'm looking for, too, as you're thinking about that, what your strategy is to kind of drill down to an answer that you're really comfortable with. I should say, I should say they're all either somewhat effective or somewhat ineffective. Uh -huh. It seems very ineffective. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> okay, you chose C, so talk to me. Wait a minute, say that again. I say C is the most effective because like, you wouldn't really do anything. So you okay. Have to take the play. So C, you're saying that is ineffective. I'm sorry, effective, the least effective. Complain to the operations officer that you are feeling pressure to fly, right? Okay, so this is, um, again, we're gonna talk about strategy, right? So this is probably a key uh, situation where we need to kinda identify what strategy are you gonna use that you feel comfortable with so that you can narrow things down, right? Okay. All right, so remember how we went back to the front and we looked at things that were ineffective and effective, right? So here it says least effective. What's in that? Effective, right? Least effective. That means that there's something effective about it. It's just not the best thing to do. You see what I'm saying? So now you have to look at your choices and say, okay, I need to find out what are the things that are ineffective, period. I wouldn't choose it, it's just not gonna work. So can you go back and look at those choices and say these are ineffective, like they don't work? Can you, can you select anything? And anybody can jump in. What would be ineffective, period? I mean, it would bring out more negative than positive outcomes. Is there anything in those choices that you would say brings out more negative than positive? Anything? Hold on. All right, what'd you say? D, you're saying D. E is just ineffective. Okay, let me see. You take that back? Okay, okay. All right, let's just go through them. So we have A again. You guys have A up here. And it is fly, but make sure you have a bottle of nasal congestion spray with you just in case so you won't have to declare an in-flight emergency or rupture your sinuses. Now, in the scenario, what is the issue? The issue is that they're constrained with staff. So does it satisfy some of what the problem is? Does A satisfy part of the problem? So A, we can say, 
It's not a really good choice, but it's solving part of the problem. So we can say we, it's a range between um, least effective, and we know that it's not highly effective, right? So we know that this is not a highly effective scenario because you're injuring yourself, right? But we know that it could be effective or least effective. Do you guys agree with that? Least effective, I tell you, is, it makes you think. <laughs> all right, so now let's look at, so since we just have, well, let's look at all of them. B, take yourself off flight status and take the heat for leaving a hole in the flight schedule. Now, how would you rank that? Is that effective? Do you think it's effective? Kind of, sort of? Maybe, kind of? What, what problem does it solve? He's not injuring himself, right? He's not putting other people at risk, right? Um, he is leaving a hole in the flight schedule, but overall, it's an effective way of handling it. I mean, it's the mature thing to do if you're working and you're sick, that you be upfront about not doing something that you can't fully do. Does that make sense? Okay. So, okay, we put B over here. So it's kind of effective. So we're eliminating that. We have to get to C. C, complain to the operations officer that you are feeling pressured to fly. Talk to me about that. How does that feel from a tone-wise? Is it, is it positive or is it negative? Does it have a positive tone or a negative tone? Kind of has a negative tone. You're just going to go and complain about it. It's not solving anything, is it? So would you say it's effective or ineffective? Ineffective. It's, in, it's just ineffective. It's not taking care of the schedule. Um, you're just kind of like a, what do they call it, a Debbie Downer? <laughs> a negative Nancy, right? Okay, so we can eliminate C based on it's just ineffective. We wouldn't even classify it as being effective because it, it does nothing. You're just complaining, right? So that's what I'm talking about. You need to have a strategy, all right? And being able to identify things that are effective and things that are just completely ineffective. So we can cross out that, right? We have, we, well, we're crossing out B because it's effective, right? Okay, so we crossed out B. A is still in the running. Then we have D. Find someone who can take your flight, even from outside the squadron, and provide the solution to the operations officer. Now, what does that sound like? That sounds like it's highly effective. Yeah? Would you agree? I mean, I would do that. If I can't perform my job duties, then I'm going to try to solve the problem and then deliver it to my manager. Right? So that we cross that out because it's highly effective. Or at least in my opinion, it's highly, it's, if it's not highly effective, it's effective. Okay, so we're gonna cross out D. D is done. All right, E, feign being more ill than you feel and take yourself off flight status. Now, feign illness, that, that's just, your integrity is at stake here. You're, you're pretending, you're, you know what I mean? It's like childish, right? You're gonna play sick, play more sick than you are. So what kind of tone does that have? It has a negative tone, feign illness. So would you say that's effective? It's not even effective, it's just ineffective. So we cross out E. So where, where are we left? With A. A is effective, but it's the least effective choices of all of them, right? So why did I go through all of that? Because that one kind of demonstrates you needing to have a strategy. You need to clearly understand if you have a question like this, how do I rank this? What are, I need to know what's effective or least effective, most effective, highly effective, ineffective, what's exactly ineffective, what's a little bit ineffective. You see what I'm saying? There are nuances and ranges between all of those. So you need to have a solid understanding of how you go about tackling and then being able to use the process of elimination to get some stuff out of there, right? Okay, so A is your correct answer for that. Let's move on to number 26. It states, you are in charge of a project supported 
by people who do not fall directly under your supervision, including a civil engineer. The engineer always provides update, update briefings and your meetings with the commander who is superior in authority to the engineer and your immediate supervisors. When answering technical questions about the project, the engineer often leaves out relevant facts. You recognize the engineer is filtering his responses, sometimes to the point of being untruthful. Select the most effective action in response to the situation. Is it A, speak up during the meeting to present the full unfiltered information yourself? B, immediately after the meeting, discuss your concerns privately with the engineer? C, immediately after the meeting, notify the engineer's supervisor of your concerns? D, immediately after the meeting, notify your supervisor of your concerns to seek advice? E, immediately after the meeting, meet privately with the commander to present the full unfiltered information. Two minutes to evaluate and select your answer. charge of a project supported by people who do not fall directly under your supervision, including a civil engineer. The engineer always provides update briefings in your meetings with the commander, who is superior in authority to the engineer and your immediate supervisors. When answering technical questions about the project, the engineer often leaves out relevant facts. You recognize the engineer is filtering his responses, sometimes to the point of being untruthful. Select the most effective action in response to the situation. Is it A, speak up during the meeting to present the full unfiltered information yourself? B, immediately after the meeting, discuss your concerns privately with the engineer. C, immediately after the meeting, notify the engineer's supervisor of your concerns. D, immediately after the meeting, notify your supervisor of your concerns to seek advice. E, immediately after the meeting, meet privately with the commander to present the full unfiltered information. What did you choose? Just B as in boy? All right, anything else? Everybody on board with B? B as in boy? All right, we're not gonna beat that one up because I love most effective. <laughs> B is the answer. Anybody need an explanation? No? Okay. All right, let's move on to number 27. 27 states, 
You have recently been assigned to lead a section comprised of experienced subordinates, but you do not have a full understanding of the mission and tasks. Your subordinates are not helpful when you solicit ideas and information from them. You know it is necessary for you to understand your job and the other section members' job, jobs in order to effectively lead your section and accomplish the mission. Here we go. Select the least effective action in response to the situation. Is it A, contact the superior who assigned you to the section for further guidance? B, contact the individual previously assigned to the section for guidance? C, meet privately with the most senior subordinate to discuss the section's mission? D, meet individually with each subordinate to get to know them personally? E, call a section meeting and emphasize that you need everyone's cooperation in order to help the section succeed. Two minutes to evaluate and select your answer. So if you just came in, come up and sign in for me. Hello, and you have the materials, right? Because you were here last week, right? Hello, everybody. And you guys have the materials, right? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So we are on number 27. So just in the beginning of the book, just keep flipping, 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 flipping until you get to 27. Which one is, because I have Oh, the situational judgment. Situational judgment. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And you know where we are, right? Okay. Seven states. You have recently been assigned to lead a section comprised of experienced subordinates, but you do not have a full understanding of the mission and tasks. Your subordinates are not helpful when you solicit ideas and information from them. You know it is necessary for you to understand your job and other section members' jobs in order to effectively lead your section and accomplish the mission. Select the least effective action in response to the situation. Is it A, contact the superior who assigned you to the section for further guidance? B, contact the individual previously assigned to the section for guidance? C, meet privately with the most senior subordinate to discuss the section's mission? D, meet individually with each subordinate to get to know them personally? And E, call a section meeting and emphasize that you need everyone's cooperation in order to help the section succeed. So before you give me an answer, what I want you to tell me is there anything of those choices that's effective? Talk to me about what's effective. Say that again. E. So we're saying that E is eliminated because it's effective, right? Yes. Is there anything else in there that you feel is an effective response to the situation? Anything else? There should be more than one, right? You think B is effective? Right. 
So she's saying that B is eliminated because it's effective. Does anybody have any opposing ideas or points about B and E? No? Okay. So, um, okay, so B and E, she's saying, are effective, all right? So, what about A, C, and D? What did you select for your answer? You chose C. A? You chose A as the answer. So what happened to, sorry, what happened to B, oh no, we have B. Okay, what happened to C and D? How did you classify C and D? It's kind of effect, somewhat, somewhat effective, right? Okay, so she has a somewhat effective on C. Do you guys agree with that? Okay, so it's eliminated because she feels it's somewhat effective. What about D? Somewhat effective? Okay. Did you guys go through that process for this and arrive at A? If you did, that's correct. So B and E were probably the highest on the list for effective responses followed by C and D were somewhat effective, right? And your A was just the least effective way to go about it. Now, there are reasons why, and I don't even think that the book offers an answer. So what would you say, now that you've gone through the process of elimination, why did you lean on A? So I'm gonna come out there. All right, so talk to me about A. From a professional standpoint, why is A the least effective? Well, he would probably know, because he's the superior. He needs to have his hands in all of everything, but... Okay. All right. So just for A, because we, we got all those, but A. Okay. Okay. All right. So from a professional standpoint, from anybody that has ever worked, held a job, why would you go ahead and say A is the least effective? Now that we've gotten all the other, they're effective. They're somewhat effective, and so you're left with A. What's going through your mind to say, you know what, yep, based on professional past experiences, I know that A has to be it. What, what informs you to say that A is the answer? You didn't try to do anything first? Huh? You didn't try to collect any information or do anything before you said Right. Do you guys agree with that? He didn't even take any steps to try to solve the problem. If you're in charge of something, then you need to show some initiative, right? To at least try to solve it before you go back to your manager and say that I can't do it, right? So now that we've gotten all the B, C, D, E out of the way and A is left, you need to have something in your arsenal of information to say, you know what, that, that's least effective because he's not even trying to do anything on his own first. Right, from a professional standpoint. All right, so that's it. All right, so aside from your strategies, employing your strategies, you need to have some, you need to have some um, background knowledge or uh, an opinion, right? An opinion about what the, uh, well, you're kind of using your opinions through all of these anyway but you need to fall back on something to say supports your, your rationale or your thinking, right? And so we would say for A, he didn't even try to uh, being in charge of a project, right? Showing leadership, and that's one of the things that they're looking for. He didn't even try to show any leadership in that particular situation to try to solve the issue on his own before he went back to his superior. Does that make sense? All right, so let's move on. Number 28. It states, your annual performance evaluation is coming due. 
In the past, your supervisors have asked you to put together a list of accomplishments and activities as inputs for the evaluation and have used that data and their own observations of your performance to develop the formal report in accordance with official directives. This year, you are in a new unit and have a new supervisor. And instead of asking you for the expected list of inputs, the officer asks you to write the evaluation and submit it to him for signature. Now, select the least effective action in response to the situation. Is it A, immediately report the request to your commanding officer. B, without consult, consulting the com, uh, commanding officer, file a formal complaint with the base inspector general office. C, ask the other junior officers supervised by this officer to determine if this is a common practice in the unit. D, inform your supervisor that you would be happy to provide inputs, but that you are uncomfortable writing the formal evaluation. E, fearing a negative evaluation, you comply with the supervisor's request, even though it violates personnel procedures. Two minutes to evaluate and select your answer. evaluation is coming due. In the past, your supervisors have asked you to put together a list of accomplishments and activities as inputs for the evaluation and have used that data and their own observations of your performance to develop the formal report in accordance with official directives. This year, you are in a new unit and have a new supervisor. And instead of asking you for the expected list of inputs, the officer asks you to write the evaluation and submit it to him for signature. You are tasked with finding the least effective. Is it A, immediately report the request to your commanding officer? B, without consulting the commander, commanding officer, file a formal report, I'm sorry, formal complaint with the base inspector general office. C, ask the other junior officers supervised by this officer to determine if this is a common practice in the unit. D, inform your supervisor that you would be happy to provide inputs, but that you are uncomfortable writing the formal evaluation. 
E, fearing a negative evaluation, you comply with your supervisor's request, even though it violates personnel procedures. So let's do that um, strategy again. Let's try to weed out what's effective. Is there anything in there that's a, an effective response? What? Say that again? D is a dog. Okay, so she's saying D is eliminated because it's effective. Do you guys agree with that? D sounds like an effective option. All right, is there anything else that might be somewhat effective? Yeah. C is in cat. C is in cat is eliminated because it's somewhat, you say somewhat effective? All right, so now we have, we eliminated C and D. All right, so now we have A, B, and E. So how are you ranking A, B, and E? Let's start with A. What is A? Can we, can we infer or glean from that any negative or positive tones from that? Do you think it will deliver more positive outcomes? No. So A is probably ineffective. So we're gonna put A is ineffective. All right, what about B? Does it deliver more positive? No, so B is ineffective as well. So that leaves us with what? E? So E is the least effective, so it's effective, but not that good, right? Okay. So fearing a negative evaluation, you comply with your supervisor's request even though it violates personnel procedures. So did you guys come up with E? Everybody came up with E as being the least effective? That's the right answer, okay? All right, let's move on. We have number 29, number 29. We have two more to do together and then we'll move on, okay? Over the last few days, you have been analyzing the sales figures from the branch where you work and looking at how they compare to the sales figures of similar branches within the business form, I'm sorry, from the last three months. The branch manager has requested you to do this and come back to her with some key conclusions and recommendations for improvements. You can see that your own branch always experiences a major dip in sales in the third week of the month, but the same is not true for the other branches. You are to select our favorite, the most effective. Is it A, speak to the branch manager to find out whether she has any ideas about why this may be so. B, record the dip as a key finding in your conclusions when you present them back to the branch manager. C, look at data beyond the initial three month period and try and interrogate the data from other angles before deciding on next steps. D, arrange to speak to the other branch managers about what you have seen in order to try and understand how their branches are not experiencing this dip. Two minutes to evaluate and select your answer.
29th, it states, over the last few days, you have been analyzing the sales figures from the branch where you work and looking at how they compare to the sales figures of similar branches within the business from the last three months. The branch manager has requested you do you to do this and come back to her with some key conclusions and recommendations for improvements. You can see that your own branch always experienced a major dip in sales in the third week of the month, but the same is not true for the other branches. Select the most effective. Is it A, speak to the branch manager to find out whether she has any ideas about why this may be so. B, record the dip as a key finding in your conclusion when you present them back to the branch manager. C, look at the data beyond the initial three month period and try and interrogate the data from the other angles before deciding on next steps. D, arrange to speak to the other branch managers about what you have seen in order to try and understand how their branches are not experiencing this dip. Again, what is the most effective response to this situation? What did you choose? C is in cat. Anything else? Anybody come up with anything else? No? Everybody's in agreement that C is the most effective? Yes? You are right. Okay? So we're going to read the last one for this section, and then we're going to move on to a new section. All right? It states, you have been managing, number 30, you have been managing a small team of customer agents who deal with the day-to-day -day incoming calls at the bank where you work. You are really pleased with the work your team has been delivering over the six months you have been managing them and feel that the new processes you have put in place have reduced call times and, lead, and led to improvements in customer satisfaction ratings. However, at a recent supervisor's meeting, you were told by your manager that incoming customer agents were now going to be responsible for cross-selling products and services as well as handling queries from customers. This is part of a wider initiative to boost the sales of key products and services that have not been very successful of late. You believe that this will have a negative impact on the key performance indicators your team are measured against and have concerns that the team will respond negatively to being asked to try and cross-sell as this isn't what they were originally recruited to do, what would you most likely do? Is it A, politely raise your concerns at the meeting so that the managers who are responsible for the cross-selling initiative can take account of the likely negative impact on the customer agents and their current performance indicators? B, go back to your team and explain the new initiative to them, highlighting your concerns about what impact the changes may have and ask them to think of ways to avoid them happening. C, wait until after the meeting and then ask your manager for a separate meeting to discuss your concerns about the changes and the impact they might have on your team. That way you can get their opinion before developing a plan for implementing them. D, spend time thinking about how the changes will impact the team and then adapt your current plans and processes to reduce the likely negative implications. Once you are happy with your plan, go back to the team to share the new initiative. Two minutes to evaluate and select your answer.
So I am not, that was pretty lengthy to read. So hopefully you had an opportunity to go through and read it again. So my question to you is what are the key words in the scenario that help to inform your decision on what to choose? Are there any key words? I'm gonna come out there. All right, talk to me. Are there any key words to help you inform your decision on what to choose? Any key words in the scenario? Any key words? All right, let's talk about what you chose. What did you choose? You chose A. A, let me put that on the board. All right, what else? You chose E. D is in dog. All right, what else? Anybody else? So everybody has A or D that they selected for the answer. A or D. All right, talk to me. So who chose A? You chose A, talk to me. Why did you choose A? It shows that you don't agree with them, but it's not that you're, you're complaining too much. You're showing that like, it's not like you feel like you might um, have a negative impact on your team. So you're just expressing your um, dislike for it, but in a polite way, so don't get too offended. Okay, so tell me one more time. So say it again for me. You, you're, you're standing up for your team, is yeah, what you're yeah. saying? You're kind of like, you're the voice of your team, so you need to make their concerns known right away. Yeah. Yes? Okay. You chose D, right? So talk to me. Why'd you choose D? helped you to choose D. Was there anything that stood out to you? Um, from like the middle of the second paragraph, mm -hmm. which is this position part of the water initiative release the sale of the bond, and you believe this will have a negative impact on the key performance of the key digital team. So, so read that sentence again for me again. You believe that this will What's that part? Huh? What's that part? You believe. What? Uh-huh. Say it again louder. You believe. Uh-huh. So the key word to help you inform your decision on what to select is you believe. You believe. Does that change your, you believe, right? You as the leader of your group, you have opinions about it, but does it necessarily mean that that's the, gonna be the outcome? Yes, no? So with that in mind, what would you choose? We have A and D on the board. What would you narrow it down to? You would narrow it down to D? Yes? Good. That's what it is because the key word is you believe. You don't know until you actually try to implement, right? Um, I'm going to read what the book says because it has a really good explanation. Um, sometimes we have to do things in our work life that we don't necessarily agree with, but we have to think of the bigger picture for the company, so on and so forth. So we talked about a strategy, and then from the professional standpoint, how we should evaluate that, right? So we have to identify keywords. You have to understand what your mission is. You have to look for the keywords in the scenario to help you inform how you're gonna go about selecting your answer. So you believe was the biggest part. So I'm just going to go over so everybody kind of understand why we're going with D, right? Yes? D is the correct answer here. And I'm just going to read to you from a professional standpoint why D is correct. All right, so for number 30 it says, D is correct because this response suggests that you are comfortable with change. While we do not always agree with changes in our workplace, we often have to find ways to work with the changes and to consider their implications on the wider business. 
not just the impact that it may have on us or our immediate team. Does that make sense? Okay. So now what we're going to do, we're making good time. We're going to actually fit, flip through, so keep going forward. You're going to see some uh, print that is bolded. We did part of it last week. So if you see the bold print, we're actually going to start on number 11. Number 11. All right, so it should be bold print. Bold print, number 11. It doesn't have a page number. Okay, number 11. So we're gonna start there. And instead of giving you two minutes to evaluate, you only get one minute to evaluate after I go over the question or a scenario, and then you'll select your answer, okay? So number 11 states, when making a presentation at a public meeting, you are asked a question about a subject that you do not fully understand. How should you respond? Is it A, provide an answer based on your understanding of the subject? B, discuss a related topic that you understand better? C, say that you don't know the answer at the moment and offer to get back to the questioner when you do. D, explain that the question is not really related to the topic you have been presenting. One minute to evaluate and select your answer. All right, so number 11 states, when making a presentation at a public meeting, you are asked a question about a subject that you do not fully understand. How should you respond? Is it A, provide an answer based on your understanding of the subject? B, discuss a related topic that you understand better. C, say that you don't know the answer at the moment and offer to get back to the questioner when you do. D, explain the question is not really related to the topic you have been presenting. What did you choose? C, C in cat, everybody's with C. And we're not gonna belabor the point. C is correct, okay? All right, so let's move on to 12. 12. All right, 12 states. What is the best way to begin a letter in response to a letter that is basically a complaint? A, I am replying to your complaint concerning new regulations on bottle deposits. B, this is in regard to your complaint concerning new regulations on bottle deposits. C, your letter addressed to an, our agency has been forwarded to me for a response. D, thank you for your letter expressing your concern about new regulations on bottle deposits. One minute to evaluate, select your answer. Is it A, 
Tell the caller that you cannot continue the conversation if he uses obscene language. B, refer the caller to your supervisor. C, allow the caller to vent before responding. D, hang up on the caller, right? One minute to evaluate. An angry caller uses abusive language and obscenities. How should you deal with the situation? Is it A, tell the caller that you cannot continue the conversation if he uses obscene language. B, refer the caller to your supervisor. C, allow the caller to vent before responding. D, hang up on the caller. What did you choose? A is an apple. A is an apple. Anybody else? Someone has C. All right. Uh, anyone else? B. You said B. B is a boy. Okay. Anyone else? All right. So now the, let the debate begin. Okay. I'm going to come out there. All right. So I heard A first. A, right? So talk to me about why you chose A. choices yeah. right and so that left you with a yeah. okay so she's saying B C and D are not really good choices you're being rude or you know you're just letting somebody to air out steam on you right and so she said she was really left with a as being the better choice out of all of them so who chose C you chose C all right I'm a, I'm a, I'll come to you too why did you choose C for me it was between A and C okay I would have gone with A if it was worded more like encourage the caller. Explain to the caller that you wish to help them and continue the conversation in a productive and respectful mm -hmm. manner. Mm -hmm. I might have gone with it then. Mm -hmm. I feel like the end result is if the caller does not agree to it, then you're hanging up on them. You're not mm -hmm. continuing the call. Mm -hmm. To me, that's not allowing a solution. Mm -hmm. That the only way you can continue the call Mm -hmm. to allow him to say what he needs to say. Oh, so you're, you're, you're a punching bag? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just don't like that. <laughs> like <laughs> okay, he, he's going to take a, some, some abuse for a little while. Uh, all right. Okay. All right. Okay. All right, so talk to me. You chose C as well. So you're another punching bag? You, you like the punching bag? You, yeah. you, you got thick skin. Yeah, I do. Oh, okay, okay. But they have thick skin, so they, they can take the abuse. Okay, go ahead. Tell me why you chose that. I feel like, I don't know, once, like once they plan like, everything out, you know what I'm saying, then it just, like, it'll go smoother, you know what I'm saying? But what if they never? What if they just are uh, full of just anger and vitriol and just will never stop? What do you do then? In a situation like that, you gotta be professional. Okay, so what would you do? So I'm angry. I'm just, I'm just an angry person, huh? But I'm gonna talk to you for an hour. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna berate you. I'm gonna just talk about you, your whole family, and I'm just gonna keep going for an hour. What would you do then? 
You would choose A? All right. Who chose B? Okay, talk to me. Uh, yes, basically along those lines, they were using abusive language and obscenities, and it was going on for an hour. It wasn't going anywhere productive. And an attempt to make something productive while like calling the supervisor and maybe having more experience and more guidance mm. about it. Okay, so let's so let, so let's go back. So uh, take out the hour. So don't don't use that as your judgment. I, I had to I had to give them some a different way to think about it. So for you, ignore the hour. We don't know. So for, for two minutes, I'm going off. And how we, what would you do? Just for two minutes, I'm going off. Whatever. Uh, uh, okay, I'm still trying to steer you in a different direction. <laughs> I'm trying to say, okay. Uh, let me see. Is it, is it, it, I'm trying to think of a different way to get you to look at that. Is it ever good to be beat up? Is, is it ever good to be, do you want to stand there and let somebody kind of, oh, but you, you were like, um, you're going to, you're going to just like send them to the supervisor, let the supervisor handle it. Really? Why did I hire you then? Why did I hire you? You're gonna just send me the work. Yeah? You're just gonna send me the work. Yeah. You're, you're not gonna show what what's your first thing to do? Yeah. Oh, well, you're not a punching bag, first of all. You don't deserve abuse. Right? So is it, is, it, is it the worst thing to tell someone who's calling, who's angry, to tell them to calm down? So that you can talk to them? Or find out what the issue is? You're not a punching bag. No, you can fix the problem. Huh? Yeah, but I mean, is it, it, so it's your job to, you're the front line worker, right? Are you not? You're just gonna send them to your supervisor, right? Yeah. You think they want to deal with it? What do you think if you sent it to your supervisor, what would they do? I don't know. Probably tell them to calm down. Right? So that's something that you could do, right? Yeah. So I, I was trying to steer you all into to A. It, it's not a problem to tell somebody to calm down, right? I mean, it's, it's not the worst thing. The worst thing that could happen is that they don't. And then you can say, have a nice day. Or, <laughs> maybe I won't. But have a nice day, let me let you talk to my supervisor, right? Before we, we transfer the call, right? Transfer the call. Okay, so. I, I like the strategy, right? You were saying that out of all of the options, B, C, and D were just, they didn't seem good, right? You're not a punching bag. Situational judgment is looking for your ability to solve problems, right? So your first line of defense is not to send it to your supervisor, right? Because they're looking, how would you solve? Can you mediate? Let's go back to that for a moment, right? Let's go back to the beginning of the book. The beginning of the book states, let me find it first. So, find the page where it says 1, 2, 3, 4, then it says 12, 13, and then it says test taking tips for subject area situational judgment. And at the bottom, let's read that again. It states, a situational judgment test will assess how you react and behave during a hypothetical work-based scenario. Yes? What are they evaluating? Can you handle conflict? Was that a situation of conflict, right? You're right in the middle of, feels like maybe, you know, war or something. Somebody's coming at you with a, a bunch of verbal attacks, but can you handle it? That's what situational judgment is evaluating. Can you handle conflict, right? Next, can you problem solve? In this conflict, can you problem solve through some heat? Right? 
just tell the customer to calm down and I and we can figure out what your situation is figure out how I can help you and if I can't help you then my supervisor may be able to help you better right next can you identify what's relevant and what isn't can you mediate or resolve situations are you a leader or are you a follower and based on previous scenarios we understand that being a leader and a follower are both good. It depends on the situation, right? So that's what situational judgment is evaluating, okay? All right, so let's move on. That was number 13, okay? So again, for number 13, A is the correct answer. And let me just read to you what the book states. It says, no employee is required to put up with obscene, abusive language. Point blank, end of story, okay? All right, so number 14, it states, what is the best way for the moderator of a meeting to deal with an individual who is monopolizing the discussion? Is it A, ignore the individual, B, encourage other people to contribute to the discussion. C, adjourn the meeting. D, ask the individual to refrain from making any further remarks. One minute to evaluate and select your answer.
So hopefully you have an opportunity to go through each of those uh, scenarios. So 15, the answer is C. Point out the inaccuracy in the other panelists' comment. The book simply states that that is crucial, it's important in this situation to point out the inaccuracy in the other panelists' statement. 16, the answer is A is an apple. Thank the person and state that you welcome all suggestions from the public. The book states, in a public meeting, it is appropriate to treat all suggestions with respect, even if they are misguided and impractical. Number 17, the answer is D as in dog. Say that you will look into the situation and call back. The book states, in a situation like this, it is best to say that you will look into the matter and call back. Number 18, your answer is B as in boy. We have a lot to cover this evening, so in fairness to everyone here, please let me continue. Number 18 states uh, in the book, the explanation is, in a situation like this, you should make the point that the interruptions are unfair to the other members of the audience who have come to hear your presentation. Number 19, the answer is C is in cat. Paraphrase the question and ask if you have understood it correctly. Number 19 for the book, it states, paraphrasing a question is an effective way to ask for clarification. It shows that you are making a serious effort to understand the question. Number 20, the answer is A as an apple. Excuse yourself to the person on the phone and tell the visitor that you will be with him or her as soon as you have finished on the phone. The explanation is, choice A deals with the visitor in the most courteous manner possible. We're not told which question is more important, the visitors or the callers. We also don't know if the conversation can or should be shortened, or if shortening the conversation would mean calling the person back and wasting time. Given the information we have, it's better to finish up with the caller before handling the visitor. Last but not least, 21, the answer is A. Use a question and answer format. The book's rationale is most people find the question and answer format helpful and easy to understand. All right, so if you would go ahead and flip forward past the answers and explanations, and again, if you need more clarity on the answers and explanations, you are in that section right now. So please continue to move forward. You will see question one situation. We did the first two last week. We are going to do question three, four, and five to finish up this small section. Again, we are going to evaluate uh, situations where we have to judge whether it's very effective, uh, effective, somewhat effective, somewhat ineffective, ineffective, and very ineffective. So, we're going to start with question three. Are you there? Everyone's there, okay. So number three, or question three, situation, it states, you are new to the public service. Your director has tasked you with a number of different jobs, and you are already feeling overwhelmed. You are worried you won't make your deadlines. Your response was to ask a coworker to help you with some work. Is this response A, very ineffective, B, ineffective, C, somewhat ineffective, D, somewhat effective, E, effective, or F, very effective? You have one minute to evaluate and then we'll go over.
right, so situation, situation three. You are new to the public service. Your director has tasked you with a number of different jobs and you are already feeling overwhelmed. You are worried you won't make your deadlines. Your response was to ask a coworker to help you with some work. So now you are to decide whether that was very ineffective, ineffective, somewhat ineffective, somewhat effective, effective, very effective. All right, so what I want you to do before you answer that is I want you to think about which category can we eliminate in its entirety? Can we eliminate the effective category in its entirety or the ineffective category in its entirety? And then once you've done that, then you have to figure out the nuances between that one category, all right? Did you guys look at it that way? All right, so what category can I eliminate in its entirety? Hold on, I'm gonna come out there. All right, so talk to me. Which category can I eliminate? Eliminate, in, eliminate ineffective. Is that, what'd you guys say? We're gonna eliminate ineffective completely? So, so I have everyone agreeing that ineffective is being eliminated. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but now once you've eliminated ineffective, what, how would you classify effective? Is it highly effective? No. Is it effective? Somewhat. Is somewhat effective? So you, you're all saying that it's somewhat effective? All right, and why? Is that something that you would recommend to anyone at any time? Yeah. You would? Yeah, no. If, if, if you were the supervisor and you found out that somebody was doing that, as a solution, would you would you say that that was effective? Would you want them to do that? If they got away with it once, would you want them to do it again? It doesn't solve the problem. So. I mean, it, it solves it for that immediate time, right? But if we were to just kind of interject a little bit more information, kind of thinking that through. Is that, is, it, is that sustainable? Is that a sustainable, it's not, right? So is that effective in any kind of way? So you're saying it's ineffective? <laughs> you see, I'm trying to steer you, right? <laughs> I mean, really, is it, is it, is it something that, it, in order for it to be in the effective category, I would say that no matter where it is, it's, it's something that you would want to repeat in the future. Is that something that you would want to repeat in the future? I, I mean, is, is, that, is that, so when we talk about behavior, is that something, is that a, a behavior that you would really support? So I'm seeing it as co-workers help each other. Yeah. Kind of thing, so that's okay. where my mind went. Okay. You're trying to find some, you're trying to find some Versus mm -hmm. saying like I'm not going to do it at all. But what if she's always overwhelmed? But it doesn't say. That. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes you got to interject a little bit. What if, what if she's always overwhelmed? What what if what if she just you know she doesn't have good time management skills? Sure. Right. Yep. So I mean, just a little. We're just going to interject a little bit there. Mike, you can come. come. So I want you to think about that, right? If, it, if it's not sustainable, then I would be hesitant to say that it's effective in any way, shape, or form. Um, so then, it gets part of the job done, right? I mean, it, it gets the job done, so I know that 
when we're trying to choose between effective and ineffective, right? It, it's, it, you know, it's like it's falling between that somewhat effective and the somewhat ineffective, right? Would you say that? Yeah. yeah. So it, it is. So let's go back here. And you couldn't see that. So you were in here in this area. I'm, I'm, I'm rebutting that. I'm, I'm refuting the effective because it's not really sustainable behavior. It's not something that you would want to promote someone to do. And I can use the mic again. Right? So I'm challenging you to think about that um, as effective behavior. It's not, some, it's not sustainable. It's not something that you would encourage someone to do. If I were to think about, if I were in a supervisor's position, I would want my employee to speak up, right? I want them to, you know, try to handle it, but then talk to me about their workload, right? But you don't know what the end will be. Will they always use this strategy to employ other, their, their coworkers who already have their work responsibilities, right? So she could be infringing on someone else, right? So for the time being, she's getting it done, but it could be an infringement upon her coworkers. So I would challenge that behavior as being effective. Now, for the moment, we're gonna look at ineffective, right? So when you evaluate ineffective, it's not completely ineffective. It's not highly ineffective because she gets a job done. It's not the greatest thing to do, though. Right? So then it's not highly ineffective. So then we look at ineffective and somewhat, somewhat ineffective. Right? So then you would drill down to those. And so you would choose what? It's just somewhat ineffective. Yes? No? Does that make sense? Kind of, sort of, maybe. <laughs> All right, so we'll do another one. But for that particular one, situation three, the answer is C somewhat ineffective, somewhat ineffective. All right, so what did I do? So I know that the book states, and we can go back up in the front, um, and they tell you to evaluate information that's just there. I don't know that you can do that always. Right, you're gonna have to inter interject a little bit. I think uh, last week, or maybe the week before, we talked about towing that line. Right? You got to use a little bit of background information, but not too much. <laughs> you got to project a little bit, but not too much. Don't make huge leaps and bounds. All right? But you're going to have to use some of your information. I mean, we're, you guys are adults, so you have, you come with information. You come with varying perspectives. And you're going to use those. All right? But you have to be mindful about how much of that, how much of your perspective you use when you're um, analyzing these different types of situations. Does that make sense? So be careful, but don't, don't shy away from it completely because your perspective can help with the little nuances of different situations. Does that make sense? Is that fair? I don't want you guys to be confused or afraid, um, but you're gonna use your background knowledge, okay? All right, so we're gonna move on to question four. Question four states, you are working on completing end of year fiscal reports, which are due to your supervisor at the end of the week. You are almost done, but are still waiting on one piece of information from a colleague. Your supervisor has asked when she can expect the reports. Your response to this scenario was to speak with your colleague and get a firm response as to when you can expect the missing information and then inform your supervisor accordingly. Is this response very effective, ineffective, somewhat ineffective, somewhat effective, effective, and very effective? So I want you to use the strategy of which category can you eliminate completely and then figure out the nuances between the three in one category. One minute to evaluate.
so the situation four, it says you are working on completing end of year fiscal reports, which are due to your supervisor at the end of the week. You are almost done, but are still waiting on one piece of information from a colleague. Your supervisor has asked when she can expect the reports. Your response was to speak with your colleague and get a firm response as to when you can expect the missing information and then inform your supervisor accordingly. So which category could you eliminate in, uh, completely? Ineffective? All right, so we are eliminating ineffective. So now the nuances between what is it? Very, uh, very effective, which is F, effective and somewhat effective. What would you choose? What would you choose for the effective? Anybody? We're talking about D, E, or F. D, E, or F. You say F? Why? Huh? Okay. So that just seems like there is nothing else you could do. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Can anybody think of anything else to do other than find out when you can get this information and then inform your supervisor? Go ahead. Say that again. Got D. You put D, mm. E, E is effective. Yeah. Okay, so you can think of a better response. What would what would be the better response? You just feel like super, you have a supervisor if they want to get in. Want me to say that again? I feel like you, uh, you're not giving your supervisor like a complete. Uh, answer of when she's getting the reports. You're just giving her a little bit of information. All right, just okay, so talk to me. So what, what would a better response be? I, well, how would you handle it? Probably just like a normal day expecting the reports. Let me say that again? I would like give her an actual date. You would give her a date? Like a date or something. You know what I mean? It doesn't oh, really so you're, Okay, so you're down in the specifics. Give me, you want to tell your supervisor exactly when you can give yeah, it to him. I just feel like it's all up in the air. Oh, okay. All right, anybody else have a different perspective? What did you guys choose over here? You guys have been quiet. What did you choose over here? Say, you said very? Very effective? All you, you guys are all with the very effective? How about you guys? You say very effective, and I know you said very effective. What about you? Very Everybody says very effective? Okay, so I have one dissenter, right? He says, she can do better than that, right? She better have an actual date for the supervisor. Okay, he's hardcore back there. He's like, you know, no slackers allowed, right? No slackers. Okay, the, the answer is, it is F, very effective. Um, I didn't think that there could be a different way of handling it, but he said, you have to have an actual date. <laughs> All right, so he's hardcore, he's not cutting anybody any slack. Um, but this one, this particular scenario, it is very effective. I mean, there's, you, you update your supervisor, um, you get the information first, right? So she went to, there was one person kind of holding up the report. You go talk to them, see when they can commit to giving you the information, and then you're not hiding anything from your supervisor. You go and inform your supervisor. And that's all you can do. So it's a highly effective response to that particular scenario, okay? So we are going to do the last one together. Uh, five, and let me see if I can offer some other perspective from the book. The book states, this response will solve the problem or make a very important contribution to solving the problem. 
you are communicating directly with your colleague, actively seeking out the information you require to complete your report and you're updating your supervisor, okay? So that was a highly effective or very effective way of handling that situation. All right, last but not least, question five. You are reviewing a batch of files that is about to be released to the public. You notice that someone's personal information was included in the batch of files. From your training, you know that this type of information is not normally released to the public. And you think the personal information was likely included by accident. Your response to the situation was to wait until the supervisor is out of the meetings and inform them. Is this response very ineffective, ineffective, somewhat ineffective, somewhat effective, effective or very effective? So you have one minute to evaluate and select your answer. situation what are some key things in that mission what's your mission right and and how did you respond to the mission so what's what the issue uh-huh okay so on a scale of one to ten is it how critical would you think that is? Six or seven. Six or seven, okay. All right. Oh, I would say effective. You would say effective? Yeah. Okay. So I have someone here saying that it's effective what the response was. What do you guys say? Huh? You think the same thing? Effective? What do you guys think? Just effective? So you don't think that it's somewhat effective, right? It's effective, but you don't think it's highly effective. Is that right? So why? Give me some answers. Give me some reasons. Why? Why is it just effective? 
Have any answers for me? No? Please try not to make eye contact with me. <laughs> I'll be honest, I didn't really like the question. You didn't like the question? All right, so, so let's look at it, right? So it's an urgent matter, right? Is it not urgent? It is. Yeah, it's a, so it's an urgent matter. And so we know we gotta do something, right? Quickly, right? So now that we know that it's an urgent matter because they said it in the scenario, right? You know that someone's personal information was included in the batch of files from your training. You know that this type of information is not normally released to the public. Oh, let's go back to the very first sentence. It says, you are reviewing a batch of files that is about to be released. So that lets us know that it's critical. It's getting ready to happen. We don't know how long, but it seems like immediate, right? And so now your response, it says, wait until. So we have those conflicting words. Something's about to happen, and now you're waiting, right? So it seems like, so she's getting something done, right? So we can say that it's effective, right? It's not somewhat effective, it's effective because, so we can eliminate somewhat because it's getting something done, right? It's not highly effective because she's what? Waiting until the supervisors get out of a meeting, meetings, plural, right? So you got all those little nuances in there that you have to catch. So it's a critical issue, but she's waiting. Her waiting, she's taking care of it, but there's a delay in how she's taking care of it. So it's more than somewhat effective. It's not highly effective. So it plants us right at an effective response. Does that make sense? So you had to put all those little nuances together. The meetings, waiting, about to, right? To help us inform after we've eliminated a whole category then how do we evaluate it in the, in, in the three responses? Does that make sense? You have a question? Uh huh. with a little explanation, it helps to clarify it a little bit. So what would you say if you were Saturday, right, and you ran across a problem like this? What, what would you, what, what would you have done? What was your initial answer? Huh? What was your initial answer before I share with you the answer? I thought it was very ineffective. You thought it was very ineffective? Yeah, how I posed the question. Okay. All right. All right. So when reading over Uh-huh. So that was kind of where I got caught up. Okay. So what would you do now? So the meeting doesn't have to pertain to the topic. But but from a strategy standpoint, is it reading over the question again? Well, how would you tackle it? if you were taking the test. So, so I guess what, what I'm trying to say is, when you're sitting and taking a test, was it a matter of misreading? So you said there was some misinterpretation. Was there, did you feel rushed to answer it? Was it timing? Did you feel nervous while you were trying to answer it? What, what was the, the thing that made you misinterpret that uh, scenario? I didn't really understand the question. You just didn't understand the question? Yeah. Okay. All right. That's fair, right? I mean, we're, we're, you're going to deal with that, right? Um, so let's let me hear from you guys. What would you do? How would you tackle each question? Right? So we talked about, so in this case, you can't really read the answers because you know what it is. I mean, you can glance over it, right? You know you're dealing with the ineffective, effective, blah, blah, blah. Um, 
He's going to have to be mindful of time and really try to read the scenario, right? Try to visualize it, right? Um, just try to, I don't know, I, I don't want to say spend too much time on something, right? Because it's, timing is everything. This is a three hour test, right? And the situational judgment, from what I understand, is a big piece of it. So I guess my only recommendation is, you know, take your time, but not too much time, right? Evaluate it, try to uh, visualize it, uh, put yourself in the situ situation if you can, and then answer the best way you can, all right? Okay. So now let's move on. So what you're going to do now is you're going to flip. There's more, if you can even imagine that, there's more practice, okay? <laughs> so you're going to flip the page and there are 15 questions and you're going to get more uh, work with the effective response uh, scenario. I'm going to put 20 minutes on the clock for 15 questions, 20 minutes, and then we'll go over the answers, okay? The clock starts now, 20 minutes. We go over the answers. Um, I'm gonna give you the letter answer. Um, the, in the back of the book, you have detailed answers and explanations. So I'm not gonna go through the explanations, I'm just gonna run through the answers real quick. And if you have any questions, let me know. All right, so for your number one, the answer is A is an apple. A is an apple. Your number two, the answer is A as an apple. 3A, the answer is B as in boy. B as in boy. Your number 3B, the answer is B as in boy. B is in boy. Your number three C is C as in cat. C as in cat. Your number four A is B as in boy. B as in boy. Your number four B is A as in apple. A as in apple. Your number 4C is B as in boy. B as in boy. Your number 5A is B as in boy. B as in boy. Your number 5B is C as in cat. C as in cat. Your number 6A is B as in boy. B as in boy. Your number 6B is D as in dog. D as in dog. Your number 7A is B as in boy. B as in boy. Your number 7B is A as an apple. A as an apple. Your number 8 is A as an apple. Any questions, comments, concerns? We are almost done. Almost done. So we have, we're going to jump right into ability to learn and apply information. You can close this book. Uh, if you didn't complete anything, of course, the task this week before Saturday is to complete whatever you didn't complete in this book. All the answers are in here, detailed explanations uh, for the answers. Moving on to ability to learn and apply information. We went through um, probably two-thirds of this. We're going to do the last four. And so based on time, I am going to give you crunch time. I'm going to give you 12 minutes to do four pages. All right, so where are you going to start? You're going to start on, I want to say it's the seventh problem in. It says LiftMaster Garage Openers. 
Lip Master Garage Openers. It's right after Dawu, Washer, Era Lead, and F codes. It's the next problem after that. Lip Master Garage Openers. There's two charts on that sheet. You see it? Ability to learn and apply information. It is. Yeah, I think it's the seventh problem in. All right, you guys ready? Yes? 12 minutes for four pages. 12 minutes because we have to get through the answers and there will be debate. Do you have it? You have the book? You already did it. Okay, did you get the answers? Okay, okay. We had debate on our, uh, let me see your answers for, for this one. What did you guys come up with for the uh, Lift Master one? C, D, D, D. C, D? Yeah. Oh, you guys came up with D? Yeah. And what did you come up for number three? B, D. B, D? No, B and then B is four. B, okay, so my B was correct. And four then is B. four is B. Yeah. Okay, so the only one that I need yeah, to look we at this one. Okay. Okay. And then, so I need to look at this one. All right. So you guys got that. All right. And so you guys, for the next one, you got C A B A D. Okay. Good. And then the next one, you got A B D C. Good. All right. And then B. Okay, good. So that's the only one I need to evaluate. I had these circles and then I don't know wh why I changed. Okay, well that's it. Okay guys, so good luck. Um, if you need to evaluate anything online, they post like this is being recorded. So if you need to go back over anything, if you need more materials, take if you want to do extra stuff. You're going to get more stuff? Okay. And then you're free to go? Okay? All right. Take care.
responsibility to yes. call okay. that from the last class. Yeah. Uh, I think I have the answers. Okay. Um, let me just double check. All right. And we went over it as a group. Okay. So, and this was up to the garage one, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Garage. C. I'm, I'm looking at this one again, mm-hmm. but D. C. Uh, C. B. C for. I have C, D, uh-huh. two, and then D. three I have, B, mm-hmm. B. Yep. C, mm-hmm. A, mm-hmm. B for three, mm-hmm. A for four, mm-hmm. and D for five. Yep. Got A, B, mm-hmm. D, and C. Yep. B, A, B, mm-hmm. B again. See. Yeah, that's it. All right. Um, I had a question about uh, from the other the situational one. Mm-hmm. Uh, for 29. This one right here. Um, when I read the explanation and stuff, because uh-huh. uh, I'll try to adjust my understanding of it based okay. on that. Uh-huh. Um, let, me, let me pull it up. says and that was the most effective okay so over the last few days you have been analyzing the sales figures from the branch where you work and looking at how they compare to the sales figures of several of similar branches within the business from the last three months the branch manager has requested you to do this and come back to her with some key so you're coming back to her with some key conclusions and recommendations for the improvements. Yeah. You can see that your own branch always experiences a major dip excuse me, mm-hmm. and sells in the third week of the month, but the same is not true for the other branches. Yeah. Okay, so looking at most effective, do you un- understand how to kind of break down um, your most effective and least effective? Um, from the beginning of the book, it said to have more, would likely have more positive outcomes mm-hmm. than negative. Yeah. Um, like the biggest thing I based it on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um, so, like you said, it says you're going back to the, the branch manager who wants you to do it mm-hmm. with conclusions and recommendations. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, that's kind of what I factored into the mm-hmm, answer. Mm-hmm. So, I see that the answer, obviously, according to the book, is C. Mm-hmm. It's saying look at the data beyond the initial three month period and mm-hmm. try to interrogate the data from other angles mm-hmm. before deciding on steps. I guess I mm-hmm. chose D. You chose D. I chose D because to me it seemed like that answer had conclusions in it and possibly, like possibly recommendations, even though it's from the other branches. So it says employees to speak to the other branch managers about what you have seen. So here's the deal. So that could lead to, so it's not like, so if you evaluate each of these, mm-hmm. It's effective, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're getting some additional information. Mm -hmm. So you would say, yes, it's effective, but now you have to like take it a step first and and make an analysis of, is it the most effective of the two? Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So you kind of taking some extra steps, some initiative Mm -hmm. to, and, and the word interrogate is not a positive word the tone that threw me off as well mm-hmm. interrogate but really is saying analyze this information a little bit further yeah i mean so that, that word didn't really throw me it off didn't too much. Uh-huh. it was more about like just looking at the data uh-huh. and try to get more information from it like to uh-huh. me that uh-huh. I mean, maybe i was just over reading it but uh-huh. i just felt like you're looking at Analysis the data, you brings may, you may not find paralysis. Stuff and you're coming, yeah. <laughs> but then you're coming yeah, back yeah. to the manager. Uh-huh. It doesn't say you definitely have something to go uh-huh, with. Uh-huh. It just says you're looking at the other one. It seems to me to be more conclusive. Uh, D. 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 Mm-hmm. And I mean like the content of it saying about what you have seen in order. And when they say what you have seen, I mean, when I looked at the, the paragraph, it uh-huh. says you can see that your branch always. It, it mentions like the dip. So like. To me, that was like a conclusion. Like you've seen that dip, and then you know you're bringing that to your manager's attention and um, talking to the other branches to see if there's like maybe recommendations based on the other branches. That was just kind of how, why I thought. Um, 
<laughs> so if, if I were to play devil's advocate, right? Yeah. If I were to play devil's advocate, you know, now that I know the answer too, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I would say, Possibly, the information that the other branches would give you would be subjective. Maybe they don't know unless they go and do some analysis as well. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So the most effective thing to do is to, to crunch the numbers yourself. Get additional information, right? Because you don't know what you don't, first of all, this could be time sensitive. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, how much time are you going to take to run down every manager of every branch to have the discussion and then come and do your report? Mm -hmm. So it's not that it's ineffective, it's effective, but when you compare it to this one, this one you're more in control of. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Just from let me take this data, okay, let me go and grab some other, and then I can sit and do my analysis. Mm -hmm. And then I can come up with some recommendations or whatever and present it to my manager. Mm -hmm. This one seems like there's just a whole other level of complexity to it because it could be more time, um, what's the word that I want to use? Time prohib prohibitive, mm -hmm. right? It, it's gonna, it's gonna be excessive time. So again, it's just, as a test taker, right? As a test taker, you're gonna have to figure out, right, what your strategy is. Yeah, that's kind of what. I'm right, to do. because every every scenario, you're gonna get completely different scenarios. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that you understand the various levels of how to rank each response. Mm -hmm. Is it effect? Okay, and then you're gonna have to go with gut feel. Yeah. You're gonna have to look for key terms. Mm -hmm. Are the terms negative? Does it have a negative or a positive tone? You're gonna have to use a little background information, mm -hmm. what you know, you know, and you did that. And so basically you were able to get it down to a 50 50, right? Yeah, that was the other one. I would, mm -hmm. That was the next one I, I would have picked. Yeah. Um, but honestly, I mean, do you agree with the explanation? Not that it matters. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with the explanation that they provide? Because the first thing they said, like, I wasn't even, like, considering that. Mm -hmm. That wasn't even a thought. So three months is a pretty short period mm -hmm. to base your conclusions mm -hmm. on. Like, that, to me, that seemed like an assumption. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, but, I mean. If you've ever been in corporate America, mm -hmm. right, if you were a numbers cruncher, right? Three, you would know that would be part of your background knowledge mm -hmm. that you can go beyond just the three month window to evaluate yeah. information as such as sales, right? You really want to get a year snapshot, yeah. right? It makes sense. Yeah, so you know, you're right, right? You were able to drill it down to two. Yeah. Um, now you get to put this into your data bank of information as mm -hmm. far as um, professional behavior, what to do, mm -hmm. um, okay. but I think that's, you know, you're, you're looking at it in the right way, mm -hmm. right? So I think if you were able to drill it down to a 50-50 choice, yeah. you're in a, in a good position. Okay. okay? All right, thank you. Hopefully that reassures you. Yep. Yeah, okay? And good luck. Thank you. Okay. All right. All right, guys, so we just have five minutes to run through and to, to give you the answers, or you give me the answers. How about that? Give me the answers, okay. All right, so um, we have Lift Master Garage over here. So I'm not gonna read the question. Um, you're just gonna tell me number one, let's bring out the answer. What did you get for number one? C, I hear C, I hear resounding C. C, arrow keys and flashes, that is correct. Number two, what did you get for number two? D is a dog, C is a cat. Well, I've done some consulting and the answer is D. D and it is the bottom of the row, the four flashes, safety sensors are misaligned is the problem. And then the solution says realign sensors until continuous flow. 
Does that make sense? So I would say this, circle it, circle number two, and go back and evaluate a little bit more. Now you have a, a, a counter answer for that. So I will tell you that um, some people chose C last night. And so again, doing some consulting, uh, the consensus was D. But again, look at it again in your spare time and evaluate C and D, okay? Evaluate C and D for the answers. Number three, what did you get? B is a boy, that sounds correct. B is a boy for number three. Number four, what did you get? Hmm? You got A? Anybody get anything else? B as in boy should be the answer for number four. B as in boy should be the answer, okay? So again, my final piece of advice is to go back and evaluate three again. Look at your three again. I'm sorry, your number two, your number two. Look at your number two again. The consensus was D, but a lot of people chose C as well. So some people chose C. So look at that. But right now we're going to say it's D, but look at it again. All right, for the next page, next page. Your number one, what did you get? C is in cat, should, is correct. Uh, number two, what did you get? A, A is an apple. Consensus on that. Three, what did you get? B is in boy. B is in boy sounds correct. Four, what did you get? A, A is an apple. Okay, awesome. Five, what did you get? D is in dog, right? Okay, moving on. This is the status LED, status LED description, status LED troubleshooting information. All right, so for, I'm just gonna read the first because we're recording this, so I want people to be able to follow at home. So your number one, uh, it says, if the status of the LED displays alert flash code eight, what does that mean? What is your answer? A is an apple, okay. Number two, it says, if the compressor circuit breaker or fuse is open, what would the status of the LED? B is in boy is correct. Three, if the trip and alert LEDs are flashing at the same time, what would be the possible cause? D is in dog is correct. Four, the status LED is flash code three. What is the problem? C is correct. All right, we're on heating and air conditioning. Heating and air conditioning. Your number one states, if there was a spark across the igniter, what would be the next step? B is in boy is correct. Number two, when the pilot burner does not light, what should you do? A, A is an apple is correct. Three, the main burner lights, but the system doesn't run. What should be done next? Okay, so anybody get anything else? B is a boy, that is correct, as far as I know. All right, so three is B is a boy. Four. What would be the effects if the pilot flame needs to be adjusted? B, B is in boy, yes, B is in boy. And last but not least, five, when the call for heat does not end, what should be done? C is correct, C is correct. All right guys, so that um, is it. So remember the quote, Success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. That's from Winston Churchill. So good luck on Saturday. Keep studying up until that point, right?